Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with Attorney Brian D. Lerner. Uh, we have lots of different subjects on uh, estate law and estate planning and on this particular one I'd like to talk about uh, why you should have a pour over will if you're doing a living trust. Now uh, assuming you're in California, which you probably are if you're watching this, it, you need to um, the, the majority of people who do uh, good estate planning uh, will have a living trust. I mean, because it has so much more uh, flexibility and it avoids probate. I know that everybody hears that it avoids probate. And believe me, if you can do that, it'll be in your benefit because once it gets in the court system and you have to go through probate, um, everything slows down and then there's tons of paperwork on both sides and you know the the judge has 10,000 cases in front of yours and yours has no priority over anyone else's so if you can avoid the probate of course that would be the preferable way to go now let me tell you what happens a lot of times um, the the living trust is made and then once it's made it needs to be funded okay um, without it being funded you have a nice living trust but you have nothing inside of it uh, which is a problem um, now many times uh, this the second uh, scenario that happens a lot is people will make a living trust they'll properly do or get the attorney to properly do what needs to be done for the uh, real property you know they'll they'll get a grant deed transferred from whatever title it currently is in whether it's community property or you know whatever into the living trust and then you know at least the living property the real properties in there then many times the attorney if they're doing the living trust will send a notification to the clients as to how to fund the, uh, <clears throat> the living trust with for example bank accounts and you know CDs money markets things like that and let them know that all that needs to also be transferred into the title of the living trust a lot of times clients will uh, forget not do it not read it think everything's done whatever the case may be and it ends up that a lot of the items that should have gone in the living trust don't and then of course the person dies the settler who made the living trust dies and then the trustee who then has the responsibility for uh, executing the terms of the living trust goes and tries to for example goes to a bank and tries to get uh, the money out of the bank account and put into either the administration trust account or um, you know get it sent to the beneficiary and so forth uh, and they can't because the bank says well sorry it's it's not in the name of a living trust There's nothing we can do go to probate um, and so what a pour over will does and it doesn't work in all cases but it certainly is uh, worth doing is it basically takes all of the items that are not in the living trust if this is worded properly it takes all of the items that are not in the living trust and once the uh, once it's made it actually pours it over into the living trust so it could work for uh, bank accounts for example that uh, it <clears throat> takes an account that essentially was not properly put into the living trust it includes it in the pour over will the pour over will references the living trust and then it pours that over into the living trust and so uh, in that case if uh, you know it was done properly and also if you don't have too adversarial of a bank uh, then it'll be able to be transferred into the trust administration account or wherever it needs to go uh, without having to go to probate uh, and so the pour over will really is a catch-all that, that that that's what sort of what it comes down to there's other things that the pour over will can uh, be used for and I'll have other videos on that uh, but in this particular case it's a it's a catch-all um, you know and what I mean by that is you can say you know you can have for example you know in the living trust 10 different things that go on the living trust and let's say you forgot about you know your your paintings in the garage or you forgot about you know an account that you opened 20 years ago or you forgot about something or another um, that all gets into the pour over will and then it goes into uh, the trust and this is not 
a last will and testament. Okay, there's different kinds of wills uh, because the last will and testament, pretty much for those people who do that, that's all they have and they don't have the uh, the pour over will. So you want to make sure that the pour over will is named properly. You want to make sure that it references the living trust in there. You want to make sure it makes clear that everything that's not in the living trust or if there's any ambiguity that you wanted in the living trust to go in there and then from there uh, everything should hopefully go smoother. So a nice little tidbit for people who uh, are doing an estate plan. Um, don't just have the living trust, have the pour over will too. Okay, if you like the video, click like, subscribe, and you can call my offices in L.A. or Long Beach to get a free consultation. I'll let you know what needs to be done, the costs, and so forth. Okay, more on the coming videos.